Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Wednesday, March 21st, 2018. Today I'm going to talk about some college basketball coaching news, as well as recapping last night's NBA action and making picks for the SPN doubleheader and looking ahead to tonight's other games on the slate. And last, I'm going to do my first NBA mock draft of the year. So a couple hours ago, news broke that the Louisville Cardinals will not retain head coach or intern head coach Dave Padgett. And that comes to no surprise. Their season ended last night with a bad home loss in the NIT against Mississippi State. And Padgett is now out of a job. And the talk is that Xavier coach Chris Mack will be or is the front runner. For the job at Louisville, if he were to get the job, that'd be a great, 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 great hire for the Cardinals, and he'd make that program relevant again. Other candidates to look out for in case they miss out on Mac are Rhode Island's Dan Hurley, and maybe a couple others that I'm not even thinking about that are possible, and also in coaching news. There was a rumor that came out today that Sean Miller was talking to Pitt about their opening, and then Miller came out with a statement saying that it, that is not true. I don't know whose side to buy. So that's interesting because Pitt is Sean Miller's alma mater, and there's rumors that he's going to get fired from Arizona or that he'd leave Arizona because of all the turmoil that's going on there. So that's remained to be seen. NBA last night, a couple of interesting results. The Raptors defeated the Magic 93-86. Important win for the Raptors. Got a win against these tanking teams. Toronto's now 58 or 53 and 18. Orlando's now 21 and 50. Kyle Lowry put up 25 in the win. And Shelvin Mack put up 17 in defeat. And the Raptors have an important game tonight in Cleveland, which I'll pick later on on the podcast. Humongous win for the Celtics, 199 over Oklahoma City Thunder. And on the flip side, that's a terrible loss for Oklahoma City Thunder. They blew a six-point lead with 20 seconds left. OKC is, drops to 43-30. Boston improves to 48-23. Marcus Morris hit a three with 1.2 seconds left to pull off the comeback win. Jason Tatum put up 23 in the win. Russell Westbrook put up 27 in defeat. And... The Celtics snap Oklahoma City's five-game winning streak. The Timberwolves defeat the Clippers 123-109. Important win for the Timberwolves. They improved to 41-31. The Clippers dropped to 37-33. Carl Anthony Towns put up 30 in the win. DeAndre Jordan put up 18 in defeat. The Pelicans defeated the Mavericks 115-105. Big win for the Pelicans as they have to take care of the tanking teams. Anthony Davis put up 37 in the win. Harrison Barnes put up 19 in defeat. A surprising result in Salt Lake City as the Hawks beat the Jazz 99-94. Bad loss for Utah. As I keep mentioning with these other teams, if you're a good team, you have to take advantage of a team that's tanking. Utah failed to do that. Utah drops to 40-31. Atlanta improves to 21-50. Donovan Mitchell put up 24 in defeat. Dennis Schroeder put up a career-high 41 in in the win. The Pistons defeated the Suns 115-88 to win their second in a row. Detroit's 32-39 now. Phoenix drops to 19-53. Blake Griffin put up 26 in the win. Alex Lyon put up 19 in defeat. The Rockets defeated the Blazers 115-111. This was a fun and entertaining game. Portland's win streak ends at 13. Houston has now won six straight. James Harden put up 42 in the win. Al Farouk Aminu put up 22 in defeat. And that was a big win for the Rockets and a disappointing loss for the Portland Trailblazers. Tonight's slate, you have the Cavaliers hosting the Raptors on ESPN. I mentioned this game before. This is an important game for both teams. Important for the Raptors from a standpoint of can they beat the Cavs in Cleveland and are they a big game team And for the Cavaliers, it's a matter of getting right and beating good teams because they have not beaten that many good teams. And don't forget, the Raptors destroyed the Cavaliers a couple months ago back in Toronto. 
So give me the Cavaliers at home as LeBron James continues to push James Harden for MVP. Then you have the 76ers hosting the Grizzlies. The 76ers need to take care of a tanking team. It's the same goes for the Miami Heat as they host the New York Knicks. And Hassan Whiteside and Dwayne Wade won't play for the Heat. But they should still find a way to win, as they did against the Nuggets the other night. The Nets host the Hornets. The Bulls host the Nuggets. The Nuggets have to go take care of a tanking team. Important game for them. The Clippers at the Bucks is a great game. Between two teams that are battling for playoff positioning in their respective conferences. This should be a nationally televised game, but it's not. The Pacers at the Pelicans is a sneaky good game on the slate tonight. Important for both teams for playoff positioning as well. And last but not least, the nightcap of the ESPN doubleheader, the Spurs host the Wizards. Important game for both teams for playoff positioning reasons. John Wall and Kawhi Leonard are not back yet for their respective teams. The Spurs have won four straight games, make it five straight games here. And the Marcus Aldridge is playing great. And their defense is playing great, although... The Warriors game's a little bit of an asterisk because all four of their guys are injured. So, that said, give me the Spurs to win the nightcap of the ESPN doubleheader. Now I'm going to reveal to you guys my first NBA mock draft of the year. For what it's worth, we don't know the draft order until after the draft lottery in May. Number one, Phoenix Suns. DeAndre Ayton, center, Arizona. Ayton is perhaps the draft's best prospect due to his size, soft touch of the rim, and his promising jump shot. He's drawn comparisons to Joel Embiid and Patrick Ewing, and the Suns, who really don't have a long-term true center, won't want to pass on him. Number two, Atlanta Hawks. Luka Doncic, shooting guard, small forward, Real Madrid. Doncic will be the most proven player in the draft due to his success overseas. Doncic is an ideal fit for the perimeter-oriented league and should have a long, productive NBA career. The Hawks need youth on the perimeter, and it's only a matter if Doncic becomes a star or not. Three, Memphis Grizzlies. Marvin Bagley, power forward center from Duke. This would be an intriguing fit for many reasons. Bagley was perhaps the best player in college basketball this past season and has great athleticism and can shoot it from three. The intrigue here lies because do they play him with Marcus Gasol or do they Grizzlies move on from their franchise player this offseason? Time will tell. Four, Orlando Magic. Muhammad Bamba, center, Texas. Bamba doesn't have much of an offensive game, but his defensive presence with his height and shot blocking should appeal to any team. Bamba's fit on the Magic would be interesting because they have a ton of bigs on their roster as currently as their roster as currently constituted, and someone would have to go. Maybe it's Nikola Vucevic. Maybe they try to dump Bismack Biyombo's contract. We'll see. Five, Sacramento Kings. Michael Porter Jr., small forward and power forward from Missouri. Although Porter barely played college basketball, he's still worth picking here at five. Porter has great offensive skill stats and good three-point range, but questions range about his mobility. The Kings need combo forwards with potential, and Porter is worth the risk. Six, Dallas Mavericks. Jaron Jackson Jr., power forward center from Michigan State. Jackson is a bit of a wild card in this lottery portion of the draft, considering he exceeded expectations as a freshman in college and played his way to this position. Although he struggled in the big dance, his rim protecting as well as his perimeter game were excellent. Jackson could be Dirk Nowitzki's long-term replacement in the big D. 7. Cleveland Cavaliers from the Boston Celtics via the Brooklyn Nets. Wendell Carter Jr., power forward, center, Duke. The Cavs can go multiple directions with this pick, but let's slate Carter here in this spot. Carter is very overshadowed on the Blue Devils due to his teammates, but his defense is excellent. He provides spacing on the floor. Carter could possibly replace Kevin Love if the Cavs decide to move on from him this summer. 8. Chicago Bulls. Mikel Bridges, small forward, Villanova. Bridges took a massive leap this year for the Wildcats. Due to his 3 and D capability, Bridges is one of the draft's safest best. The Bulls have a need at small forward, and Bridges would be a nice fit to go with Chris Dunn and Laurie Markkinen in their rebuild. 9. New York Knicks. Colin Sexton, point guard, Alabama. Let the Sexton versus Trae Young debate begin. 
I have Sexton going here due to his athleticism and his ability to get to the basket. That is something the Knicks have lacked for years now, and Sexton is the safer bet here, and he would be a nice pairing with Kristaps Porzingis once Porzingis comes back from his ACL injury. 10, Charlotte Hornets. Kevin Knox, small forward Hornet, or Kentucky. This feels like a Hornets pick. Knox hasn't been consistent as a shooter as the Wildcats hoped, but he still projects as a solid defender and can rebound very well. Nick Batum is not the small forward of the future for the Hornets, and Knox can fit that bill. 11, Los Angeles Clippers from the Detroit Pistons. Trey Young, point guard, Oklahoma. This pick makes a ton of sense for the Clippers due to the fact that Milos Teodosic is more of a shooting guard and the fact that Patrick Beverly might not be the same coming off his injury. Young is a polarizing prospect because he draws comparisons to Stephen Curry, especially earlier in his collegiate career, and as defenses started figuring him out, he wasn't the same. That said, he's a great scorer and has some very deep range, which makes scouts compare Young to Curry. 12. Philadelphia 76ers from the Via Suns via the Los Angeles Lakers. Miles Bridges, small forward, Michigan State. Although Bridges might end up being a small ball power forward in the future due to his average ball handling, he is a great shooter on the wing and provides great athleticism. Bridges would fit nice on this Sixers team with Joel Embiid with Ben Simmons because Ben Simmons has the ball a lot in his hands and Joel Embiid likes to have the ball as well. 13, Denver Nuggets. Shea Gilligas Alexander, point guard, shooting guard from Kentucky. This would be a nice fit with Gilligas Alexander playing alongside Jamal Murray. Gilligas Alexander isn't quite a good shooter yet, but he's a great passer and makes his teammates better. He would be a nice eventual replacement for Will Barton on this Nuggets team as Barton approaches free agency. 14, Los Angeles Clippers. Robert Williams, power forward center, Texas A&M. Williams could have been a lottery pick last year, but decided to come back to school for one more season. Williams isn't known for his offense, but he's great at the rebounding and defending the rim. He could be a poor man's DeAndre Jordan. 15. Phoenix Suns from the Milwaukee Bucks. Zanon Musa, small forward from Sedavetia. Musa is an intriguing international prospect that is motivated to play in the NBA. Musa is a great scorer on the wing, and his playmaking skills are improving. Considering the Suns have three first-round picks, this is a wor risk worth taking. 16, Phoenix Suns from the Miami Heat. Lonnie Walker, shooting guard, Miami. Walker didn't have the greatest freshman season due to his coming off his meniscus tears, which provides an interesting case for him returning to Miami for his sophomore season. That said, Walker is worth the taking in the spot due to his pure talent and his potential if he were to come out. 17, Atlanta Hawks from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Troy Brown, shooting guard, small forward from Oregon. Brown is an interesting prospect considering that he's had a solid season in Oregon but has a reputation of disappearing in games. Brown's size and ball handling ability is what makes him worth a selection at this spot. Six or 18, Philadelphia 76ers. Kyrie Thomas, shooting guard, Creighton. Thomas is an interesting case here because he doesn't have much upside which makes him a reach here. What Thomas does have, though, is a two-way presence with great shooting and good perimeter defending. This pick would be a solid one for the Sixers, considering that J.J. Redick may leave in free agency this summer. 19, Chicago Bulls from the New Orleans Pelicans. Mitchell Robinson Center from Chalmette High School in Louisiana. Robinson had an off year from competitive basketball and has no experience behind or beyond high school. Robinson provides athleticism and shot blocking, which intrigues teams, although there are questions about what else he can provide. 20. Washington Wizards. Daniel Gafford, center, Arkansas. Gafford exceeded expectations in his freshman collegiate season, which put him in this position. Gafford's offensive game isn't great as he often struggles to protect the ball while trying to finish, but his rim protecting and shot blocking makes him an interesting case. 21. Utah Jazz. Kaeda Bates Diop, power forward, Ohio State. Bates Diop had an outstanding junior collegiate season. What hurts Bates Diop is his lack of athleticism, but his season at Ohio State cannot be ignored due to his outstanding shooting and providing matchup problems for the opposition. This would be a nice fit for the Utah Jazz. 22, Indiana Pacers. Chandler Hutchinson, small forward, Boise State. Hutchinson is one of my sleepers in this draft class. 
Hutchinson isn't a great shooter, but has a nice all-around game with his ability to attack the rim, his rebounding, and he's a solid off-the-ball defender. 23, San Antonio Spurs. And Fernie Simons, point guard, shooting guard from the IMG Academy. This feels like a classic Spurs pick. Simmons is a bit of an undersized shooting guard, which makes him a bit of a project, but he can attack the basket and has a decent shot, but he must develop on the defensive end. 24, Los Angeles Lakers from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Bruno Fernando, center, Maryland. Fernando is one of the more athletic big men in this draft. Fernando is often in foul trouble this season and is very raw, but his great mobility and great he's great around the basket. The Lakers can afford to take a chance here. 25, Minnesota Timberwolves from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Aaron Holiday, point guard, UCLA. Holiday is another one of my sleepers in this draft class. Holiday is a great scorer and shooter, and especially from distance. He can hold his own defensively, but isn't a great player when it comes to getting to the paint. He would be a nice backup point guard on the right team. Maybe it is the Timberwolves with Tom Thibodeau. Number 26, Portland Trailblazers. Jacob Evans, shooting guard, small forward from Cincinnati. Evans' upside is limited, although because he's an erratic shooter and isn't aggressive at the rim, his defense is his strength and he can guard both wing positions very well. 27, Boston Celtics. Jonte Porter, center, Missouri. Porter quietly bursted onto the scene as a freshman in light of his brother and his brief college career. Porter is a great all-around player with his rebounding and passing abilities and can shoot it from three. Could be a poor man's Nikola Jokic. 28, Brooklyn Nets from the Toronto Raptors. Jerome Robinson, shooting guard, Boston College. Robinson could be a steal in this spot. Robinson is a great scorer and is great at creating his own shot off the dribble but he is not an upper-tier athlete. 29, Golden State Warriors. Bruce Brown, point guard, shooting guard from Miami. Brown could be a steal at this spot in the draft considering he missed most of the season with a foot injury. Brown has a great defensive mind and has athleticism and size to succeed. 30, Atlanta Hawks. Rui Hachimura, small forward, power forward from Gonzaga. Hachimura isn't a sure thing to enter this draft year and doesn't have a three-point shot, so there's a chance he might go back to school. He has shown flashes with his great passing and rebounding and has great athleticism as well as he is a solid defender. That's my first NBA mock draft of the year. I'll probably do another one at some point next month, probably before the NBA playoffs start rolling in because we'll know the order from 15 to 30, but we still won't know the lottery. Tomorrow I'll be back recapping the NBA action and going over other news that could possibly break. And also tomorrow I'm going to be doing part two of my MLB preview with prospect rankings and comparisons for every top prospect. And I'll also pick the games in the Sweet 16 for the first day of the Sweet 16 of the uh, men's NCAA tournament. I hope you guys have a nice day, everybody, and please stay 